Yes, we have Philippe uh, Frosa already connected from the European Commission. So we are going about uh, to give the floor to, to him. Thank you very much for, uh, for joining, Philippe, if you can hear me. And uh, after that, there will be the introduction of uh, the th three projects that are uh, uh, organized in this session uh, together, Escalate, Empower and Cephas. We will, we will have a short break where you can already again taste the fancy snacks from uh, Gruber uh, that Gruber provided. After that break, uh, there will be three roundtables, uh, shippers, uh, OEMs and infrastructure with super power, powerful companies that uh, they will give their insight, insights about uh, the carbonization in uh, long road, uh, heavy uh, road transport. Okay, so I don't want to take much time. Uh, Bernard, colleague. So, Ber Philip, can you hear me? Fernando, maybe you would like to give the floor to Philip that uh, you know him. That's fine. Meantime, uh, Philip Frosar is connecting. Uh, Thank you, Maximo, for, for introducing us. My name is Fernando Liesa, and Secretary General of uh, Alice, and together with uh, 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 Two Zero and uh, all these projects, bringing forward this uh, this session for for you. And as an introduction, uh, we'll have uh, Mr. Philippe Frossard. Uh, he's uh, head of unit uh, in European Commission uh, for Future Mobility Systems and Transport. So, uh, Philippe. So good afternoon, everyone. First of all, thank you very much to the organizers of this workshop for giving me the opportunity to say a few words. I am uh, very grateful for uh, Alice and 0 to have decided to uh, organize this, uh, this kind of event because I think this is very important. And that's the reason why I wanted to, uh, to, to say a few words. Uh, what you are doing will be essential for us to fulfill our objective of uh, we, the objective that we have uh, identified and set out in the, in the Union regarding the greening of, uh, of mobility. You know the, 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 our objectives, I'm not going to, to repeat because I keep on saying the same thing ever and ever again every time I go to uh, about the Green Deal, about the Smart and Sustainability Mobility Strategy. You know our objectives when it comes to passenger vehicles, you know the, the, the timeline that we have regarding the uh, ban, the effective ban of uh, vehicles with internal combustion engine by 2035. And I think there uh, we have uh, already quite a number uh, when it comes to heavy light duty vehicles, when it comes to passenger vehicles, we have already identified a number of technical solutions that can be deployed, that are deployed already now, uh, and that are available in the market so that we are will be on track for this uh, target of, uh, zero emission uh, mobility for light duty vehicles. But when it comes to heavy duty vehicles, the situation is a little bit different. We published recently uh, a, a number of uh, objectives regarding the heavy duty vehicle sector, uh, with in particular the, 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 the proposal to have a target for trucks that uh, we want to have by 2040. 90% of the trucks should be zero emission. We want to have all the buses uh, zero emission by 2030. So these are clear, ambitious targets for uh, the heavy duty vehicle sector. And we have to respond to that. And uh, there is really a need for research innovation in that domain. And I'm very happy to see that today we will be, uh, we will have the presentation of uh, projects that have responded to uh, the call that was uh, launched uh, under the, the, the 2.0 uh, work program that address precisely the, this issue of uh, zero emission mobility for heavy duty vehicle. And uh, we have high expectations as regard the outcome of this, uh, these projects. So in a way, uh, when you replied uh, to this uh, topic, you also integrated the main components and uh, the main aspects that we wanted to, to flag in this topic. And I'm just going to recall them. The first one is modality. We want indeed to have the best solutions optimized for the real needs of the users and adapted to the missions needed. And the second one is that uh, we want to aim for uh, mass production. So we don't want solutions to be confined 
to uh, a very limited number of applications. We want to aim for uh, deployment uh, in a mass manner uh, of these technical solutions. And that's the way we will eventually get more affordable solutions that will be available to, uh, to the users. So these are the two aspects that we flagged when describing the, uh, the call uh, for, uh, for this topic in the web program. And that's what we expect the projects to deliver on. I think the, the interesting aspects that we want to, to, to that I wanted to flag uh, and my expectations is really for different actors to work together. And that is something that uh, is really, will be taking place already today because uh, there will be uh, perspectives and views from the logistics uh, actors, there will be perspectives and views from the OEMs, and there will be also the perspectives and views from the infrastructures. And only through the coordinated actions of these three actors will we be able to make progress. So I'm really welcoming this coordination among the three projects that have been funded, uh, because uh, they are uh, interested and there is added value in having a closer coordination and cooperation between these projects when it comes to areas of common interest and commonalities. For instance, it's clear that if you uh, work on digital solutions, there might be an interest in working together in these aspects. Similarly, when it comes to life cycle assessments or the tools for vehicle integration, there might be an interest in you developing a coordinated approach so as to avoid duplication of effort. But I should stress that you are not working as one single project. Uh, would we have wanted one project to reply and to respond to this uh, topic? We would have specified one project only. We wanted from the start to have several projects, not competing against each other, but actually developing different possible, possible different technological solutions. And uh, despite the fact that we encourage this coordination and this cooperation between the projects, we want these projects to run independently. Uh, that's something that I, I, I should stress there. And another aspect that I think is important for you to consider is that we are not expecting from the projects uh, policy recommendation. Uh, I mean, this is not the, the purpose of these activities. What we want from you is to develop technological solutions and try to push them as much as possible uh, so that we can be confident that the deployment of these solutions will be a success. So having said that, I'm very happy to see this good and close cooperation between the, the projects uh, which have just started. I'm very happy to see the, the, the effort that has been uh, made by the technology platform to encourage this cooperation. I'm very happy to see today that uh, the, the, the actors that I mentioned, namely the people from the logistics, from the OEMs and from the infrastructures are working together in uh, addressing the issues that are being uh, faced with within these projects and I'm looking very much forward to the, the, the results not only of this workshop but on, the, on the, of this cooperation so you can count on us to support you all st the steps of the ways and uh, as I said uh, we will be very happy to participate in any future events that uh, you wish to organize in that format or in another format and uh, you can uh, keep assured, rest assured that we will be always very supportive of this type of initiatives. So on that last point, I would like to stop here my intervention, short intervention, and I will give you back the floor uh, so that uh, you can continue with uh, the, the, the presentations. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank, thank you, Philippe, uh, very much for, for your intervention. So. Uh, I don't know if there is any any uh, question from from the audience. Not at this stage. So then later we can have these uh, uh, questions if if needed. But uh, for me, it's with uh, great pleasure from an Alice perspective. Later we'll go a little bit more on the presentation on, on Alice and our role in this uh, in this arena. But uh, one of the partnerships that the European Commission has put in place for the period 21-27 is to zero is really on decarbonizing road transport and support with the technologies and innovation that uh, that process and I here we have uh, the chairman of that uh, partnership that is uh, Mr. Stefan Neugebauer so I, I with great pleasure I give you the, the floor so then you can uh, 
welcome our guest. Thank you. Thank you, Fernando. So also from my side, a very warm welcome. My name is uh, Stefan Neugebauer. I'm from BMW, uh, but uh, I talk with you today on behalf of the Two Zero Partnership. And this Two Zero Partnership, the full name is Towards Zero Emission in Road Transport. It's a public-private partnership from the European Commission on the one side and the private side on the other side. We try to find technical solutions for the decarbonization of road transport going towards zero emission mobility. And we are very happy that in this partnership, one of the technology platform behind is Alice, the logistic platform. And this is very much needed. Why? Because we try to have a holistic view on road transport. And this means we have at least four pillars. The first pillar is the vehicle itself. Yes, for sure, we need zero emission vehicles. The second thing is these vehicles need to be integrated into the energy system and in specific into the electric grid. And the third pillar of this holistic approach is logistic and services which are needed for an efficient road transport system. And we also try to deal with circular, circular economy uh, issues from the vehicle itself, from the use case and so on. So these four pillars and the logistic is one of the very critical pillars for, for this. We had uh, Fernando intensive discussions with the commission if logistic should be included or not. We had been well aligned that uh, logistic is not should not only be included logistic is needed is needed and therefore we are happy about this collaboration and uh, in specific about this workshop today so um we have on the one side in road transport we have the passenger car business this is more my personal business and we have the commercial business but we have the same pain point. We need the vehicles for passenger cars. I think we are well advanced. Uh, there's clear that uh, electromobility will be one of the, or maybe the most important contributor towards zero emission uh, in road transport. So for the passenger cars, we are on track. For the commercial vehicles, where there are a lot of activities ongoing, we will hear about research projects later on. But the final solution, I think, is not yet clear. We have still a lot to develop uh, from the vehicle perspective itself. And then the infrastructure pain point is even more relevant than for passenger cars, because we are talking about uh, a different uh, level of energy which is needed and different level of investments. Um, so I think this integration into the energy system and into the grid together with the infrastructure is one of the most relevant issues. And then I learned uh, that also regulatory aspects um, are really also blocking the uptake of uh, potential zero emission um, solutions. So uh, that's the reason why uh, in our community, the um, Alice technology platform, the Two Zero partnership, the technology platform for road transport, air, air truck, and many others, we discussed together with the European Commission beyond the very good and needed um, research projects, which are ongoing, where we try to integrate some trucks in daily business, logistic. Um, beyond this, what could be or what will be the next step for the rollout of zero emission um, logistics on the road? And here we said, we need infrastructure. We need a corridor. We need a trans-European corridor connecting areas in Europe using uh, going through different countries and we need 
highways very really have the infrastructure of the future, the digital infrastructure and the energy infrastructure of the future, which high power charging for trucks. And we are talk not talking here one or two charging stations for trucks. Forget it. We are talking about 50 or more in parallel at a specific site. And this means we need the connection to the grid. Today, the grid is not there. And the infrastructure is not there. And we need to coordinate this. And this should be the next step in the rollout. Really, to think big. And it's an interesting discussion, and we, we have a um, very constructive uh, dialogue uh, with uh, Philippe Fossard, you, you just heard, but it's go far, uh, going far beyond research, far beyond research. Um, it's going into investments, but if we really want to achieve a zero emission road transport, we need to be concrete. And here in this fair, we have all these people from the daily business trying to be concrete, not talking, but action. And this is what we try to, or what we try to discuss with um, stakeholders from, from the policy level as well. If we really want to go beyond zero emission road transport research, we need a rollout in specific of the infrastructure. And yes, it's true. It's absolutely complicated because we need so many actors. We need not only the OEMs and the truck producers. We need the energy providers, we need the electric grid infrastructure, we need the road authorities, we need the, 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 uh, all these property owners, we need uh, uh, software for, 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 for um, the data uh, used, and so on and so on. So it's really a huge challenge to coordinate this. Yes, it's complicated. Do we want to have zero emission in road transport logistic or not? If we say yes, we should do it. And it costs a lot of money. It costs so much money. We are talking about billions. Yes, do we want it or not? And that's the pain point, I think. And here, uh, therefore, we are very happy to do the first step with the research programs and then to discuss the next step, which means going beyond research, a rollout so that at the end, we can have this uh, zero emission road transport. We are happy to be with you. And thank you very much, Andrea, our vice chair of the two zero partnership from uh, Gruber Logistics for pushing us to have uh, this workshop together with you and together with Alice. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Thank you, Stefan, for this challenging uh, description of what we are facing, but also very encouraging on our way forward. So then that's very, very good for us and, and really looking forward to go in this direction. So then in the meantime, uh, I, I'll get my slides so then we can go there. I, what we see from Ali's perspective is that there is a, a go to the next slide. There is a big gap between what we need to do what it, and what is in place. So when we look into the objectives of the European Commission to move on uh, for CO2 standards saying that the new fleet sales 2030 should be 30% less CO2 emissions. Now with the new um, revision of this, maybe 45% less emissions. This is a huge challenge, it means thousands hundreds of thousands of trucks need to be in place 2030. It's not that long time if we need to build new grid, new infrastructure. So then it's really important to start acting now to reach to those targets, otherwise we will miss them. But when we look into what is in place, uh, we, we have many of our members that are going in pilots and understanding in even getting operational cases in which they can maintain electric uh, tracks under very concrete conditions. But these are always based on a project base. So then I decarbonize with this customer, this line, this operation. We cannot build based on that the future and the scale 
that's why we need this type of initiatives in which we move from project base to a scalable uh, solutions and this is the the area of of the corridor and the, what we want to bring forward saying we need to nucleate this interest and create a scale to go forward so then this is uh, the challenge so in alice what we what we are it's an association of 160 members coming from different types of stakeholders we have big uh, supers the the ones that uh, need to decarbonize their supply chains that we have very good a lot of carriers and innovation companies we have posts we have many many of the stakeholders require us at the end what we look into alice is to have a, an holistic uh, view of the problems and challenges that uh, logistics uh, needs to needs to face and our mission is acceleration of decarbonization affordable way it's clear that we can move to decarbonization it's very challenging but we also think that it's not enough to decarbonize the congestion we need to look more into the efficiency into the other ways so then if we go to the next slide what we created is our roadmap to our zero emissions in which we def define five pillars for in that we need to work in order to meet the carbonization targets from logistics and supply chain uh, management. And this we did uh, three years ago, we presented our roadmap just the day before European Commission presented the Green Deal. So then it was very timely, but we, we needed to work uh, a lot of uh, a couple of years on, on this. Today, we are focusing on this area, on the carbonization of road transport, transition in the assets, the vehicles, and moving to renewable energy. But within Alice, we work other important sources for decarbonization logistics, like intermodality, collaboration, getting better use of the assets and resources. So then if we go a little bit, who is taking care of this uh, within uh, Alice? Uh, and I think there is one, if you click uh, one more. Yeah, exactly. So in Alice, we have different uh, thematic groups. One is on efficient and low emission assets and, and energies. And that is one pillar that is dealing with this area. And uh, here we have different companies in Alice that are leading this, this effort and on different activity fields. And Andrea Condotta, that it's vice uh, president or in the board of, uh, of, two, of two Zero. It's also a uh, vice chair in our uh, program on efficient and low emissions, really working on this. So it's uh, the asset for two zero in our platform and our asset from Alice in two zero. So then it's getting things uh, connected together. And uh, all these projects that we will be will be presented there are part of this partnership two zero that uh, it's developing and has, uh, I don't know how many projects, many of them at the end, the investment could be of 600, 600 million euros during 21, 20, 27, only for research innovation in, in zero emissions uh, uh, mobility. So we go ahead. And as uh, we said, uh, what Cephas is trying to do is to address these interdependencies on recharging, electrification, vehicles, working on TCO, working on the tools that are required to manage these new vehicles in fleets because it's very nice to have one or two trucks but when we try to see or work with these operations the way these vehicles behave are very different compared to conventional vehicles so then when we want to integrate these vehicles in fleet management systems in operational systems we may need probably this is what we see in the projects much more complex systems and probably an increased role from the freight forwarders logistic service providers and, and there is a new uh, way a new uh, way of uh, addressing this if we want to cover this this gap and this is what we do in Cephas uh, we are part of the Cephas project but as said we try to coordinate to, with the other projects to bring these stakeholders uh, together and really on very concrete uh, tests and demonstrations that will be uh, presented later go through all these little problems uh, that uh, Ben will explain, but need to be addressed and need to be, it's for everybody in the in the ecosystem. These problems need to be solved. And it's not making any sense. Individual companies are facing these problems once and again from the individual companies. Let's address the companies, let's, let's address the problems in a collaborative environment. It's, you are not going to gain more or less of addressing the problem yourself. When the problem is, is addressed, your competitor will build on the solution. There is nothing preventing them to do. 
but in order to address these, these problems and challenges, we need to get them exposed, clear, and work on them. And the good thing of the European projects is that provide a good environment to work this and to also, even if they are not expecting recommendations, organizations like Alice are taking clearly these learnings in other areas of our work, we go and said, okay, if we want to move fast, we need to do this and this from the regulation point of view. We don't do this directly, but there are many associations in our membership that are clearly mandated to do that. So this is what, it, what we do. So then uh, what we say in Alice is that the best way to predict the future is to create it. And I hope these projects, and I'm quite sure these projects are creating this future. And also the other one that is, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. So then now, I think after this introduction, uh, I hope it has not been uh, too overwhelming for you, but now